전 세계 어느 나라에서라도 우리 전통악기 징과 꽹과 리소리가 울려 퍼지면 처음 듣는 외국인들이라 하더라도 신명나게 어깨춤을 출 수밖에 없습니다. 줌을 놓치거낸 징은 경박한 땡땡땡 소리가 나지만 우리 전통의 징은 진폭이 커졌다 작아졌다 하는 아름다운 소리가 나죠. 노쇠로 만든 징과 꽹과리는 어느 나라에서도 볼수 없는 특수한 우리 전통의 창동기술로 만들어집니다. 바로 불글스레한 금빛을 띠는 방자입니다. 방자의 합금 비율은 구리 78%, 주석 22%인데요. 현대 공학에서는 주석의 양이 많아질 경우 충격을 줄 경우 깨질 수밖에 없기 때문에 실용 용기를 만들 경우 주석의 양을 10% 이내로 추천합니다. 그런데 전 세계 유일하게 방자는 22%의 주석이 포함되어 있는데도 깨지지 않습니다. 이에 관한 비밀을 밝히기 위해 해외의 학자들이 한국을 찾았는데요. 이는 거듭되는 망치질과 반복적인 열처리가 방자가 깨지지 않는 비밀로 밝혀졌죠. 주석은 무르기는 하지만 열의 강에서 달궈져 있는 한 아무리 두드려도 깨지지 않는데 지속적인 열처리로 주석의 취약한 성질을 극복한 후 망치질로 주석을 잘게 부숴 흐트러뜨려 깨지지 않게 만드는 것 자체가 놀라운 과학이라는 것입니다. 이렇게 만들어진 방자는 두드려도 결코 깨지지 않으며 진과 끈과리 역시 마음껏 두드려도 부서지지 않죠. 방자의 장점은 최근 들어 해외에서 더욱 부각되고 있는데요. 이를 취재하기 위해 해외 방송에서 한국을 찾았습니다. Making Bangja Yugi starts here with molten bronze, and after hundreds of hammer strokes, it's transformed into some of Korea's most expensive tableware. Artisans work with fires over 1,300 degrees Celsius, carefully reheating the metal between rounds of hammering. Too hot, and it will melt. Too cold, and it'll shatter. No molds are used in this process. Only skill and an experienced eye. When it's done, this rice pot can sell locally for over $350. So what makes Bangja Yugi so labor-intensive? And is that why it's so expensive? Bangja Yugi refers to Korean hand-forged bronzeware. It can take many forms, from pots to gongs. While Bangja Yugi production has largely been modernized, Lee Bangju is one of few Yugi masters who continue to produce certain pieces using traditional methods. Bangju, who is 96, has been making traditional Korean bronzeware for over 70 years. 저 전혀 제가 선택해서 한거 아니고 저거 그냥 어 진원은 팔자가. In 1983, the South Korean government declared him a living national treasure. A single spoon, fully handcrafted by Bongju's team, costs $70. A set of seven bowls costs over $1,800. Bongju starts off by measuring the ingredients. The perfect bronze alloy for Bongja Yugi is in the details. An exact ratio of 78% copper and 22% tin. The metals are heated to over 1,300 degrees Celsius in order to melt and boil. Although the alloy will melt at a lower temperature, Bongju says that heating it to 1300 degrees ensures it can stretch without cracking once cooled. 그 합금에 어긋나게 되면은 늘어나지 않고 또 늘어난다 하더라도 이것에 가게 되면 손가락들은 구멍이 뻥뻥 나기 때문에 그건 아주 안 되는 거죠. 이렇게 아주 안 완전히 안 됩니다. 그건. They then pour the molten alloy into a heated stone with a round cutout. Once the alloy cools, it becomes a bronze plate with a rounded bottom, referred to as a baduk. Bongju's team heats the cooled baduks again, so they can hammer them without risking breakage. One person cannot hammer the bronze alone, as they won't be able to move fast enough before the metal cools. Working quickly in a circle, artisans strike the red-hot baduk, stretching it until it's the desired size. Each careful blow of the hammer plays an essential role in shaping valuable yugi. This also means one misplaced hit could cause irreparable damage. 해달들이 이제 그 너무 한 놈이 잘못하게 주고 깨져서 불락 나잖아요. And it's not just the hammering that can ruin the baduk. Every step of the traditional process is manual, down to fanning the fire. Fanners push and pull the bellows creating wind to keep the fire going. They depend on experience to determine how hot the fire is, and if they allow it to get too hot, the bronze melts. 
this particular banner is still in training. Any defects and the bronze can't be sold. It has to be taken out of circulation, remelted, and processed all over again. After another round of hammering, Bongju cuts the baduk into a circle to the desired diameter. The baduk is then heated back up to working temperature, and the artisans begin another cycle of carefully hammering and shaping. Artisans stack the baduks on top of each other to shape multiple pieces simultaneously. This is efficient, but it's also safer than working them one at a time. Stacked bronze plates don't cool as quickly, so they're less likely to break. And broken metal doesn't just ruin the product, it can also be dangerous. Still, only a month later, Bongju went back to work. Once the pot takes form, Bongju can separate the layers, revealing multiple roughly shaped pots. His team then refines their shapes individually. The pot is repeatedly shaped, trimmed, and shaped again, all freehand, under the skilled and watchful eye of Master Bongju. Bronze working arrived in Korea around 1300 BC. The art form peaked starting in the 9th century AD when it began to be exported to neighboring countries like China and Japan. The demand for Bangja Yugi fluctuated over time. But in the 1980s, producers saw interest in the bronzeware pick up. That's Bongju's son. He's been making Bangja Yugi for 40 years. He says Bangja is still popular in Korea. Part of its appeal is its antibacterial and antiseptic properties, particularly against bacteria like E. coli. But this demand created the necessity to modernize, to supply more Bangja Yugi while cutting down production costs. Back at the workshop, Bongju's team is almost done making a rice pot. Once the pot is in its near final shape, they quench it by dunking it in water. This removes some of the oxidized layers and prepares the pot for the last stage, shaving off the surface to reveal the soft toned bronze underneath. 아까 보셨던 사람이 발로 돌려주면서 이 깡을 가지려고 우리 영어로 가지려고 합니다. 깝대기 벗겨 버린 거. 아마 지금도 아마 5년 내지 10년 숙련 되지 않고 가질 수 있는 변화를 못 올라가요. Due to the high demand for quality bangja and the need to sustain his business, Bongju too has mechanized some of the process. Even then, it requires highly skilled labor, as many stages are still performed by hand. But for Bongju, it's not about how much Bangja Yugi he can make or how much he can sell it for.